Wisteria. Energy. 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 Twist. 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 Hello everyone, welcome back to The Ghosts of Essex. This tale is called A Night to Remember. Danbury Church can be seen for miles, standing as it does on one of the highest hills in Essex. Our pagan ancestors would have chosen a place like this for their sacred ceremonial bonfires, as such as the celebration of St John's Eve at Midsummer. And when the church was built, there in Christian times, it was dedicated to St John the Baptist. The church has a dramatic history and ancient records tell of two visitations by the devil. On Corpus Christus Day in 1402, can be pronounced in different ways, Corpus Christus, Corpus Christi. Depends. During even song, there was a violent storm which broke part of the steeple and damaged the chancel. At the height of the tempest, the devil himself was seen in the likeness of a grey friar behaving himself very outgoulishly, which naturally put the congregation in a marvellous great fright. That's just how they would talk back then. During another legendary visit, the devil stole the fifth bell from the belfry. This was the bell, told to mark the passing of us all and to drive away the powers of darkness. And, as his satanic majesty fled with his trophy, the close pursuit of the local people caused him to drop it so that it rolled down to a place still known as Bell Hill Wood. It is said that when the fifth bell was replaced, no bell ringer could be persuaded to ring it in case this inspired the devil to make yet another unwelcome visit to Danbury Church. But devil or no, Danbury's wooden steeple was the victim of another violent storm in 1749. This is Once again, when it was struck by the fork lightning and it burnt the top 20 feet. And during the last war, the church was bombed by an enemy aircraft in 1941, causing extensive damage and removing the roof. Fortunately, Danbury's three carved wooden knights were left unarmed. Although when I visited the church recently, I saw that one seems to be suffering from woodworm and has lost part of one leg. Who are they? These oaken gentlemen are sleeping the centuries away. A notice in the church states that their armour dates. The two in the north aisle at around 1272 to 1307. The one in the south aisle a little later. Their cross legs indicate crusaders or church builders. And as the last crusade was in 1270, they are assumed to be members of the St. Clear family, who first endowed the church and were responsible for rebuilding the North Isle. But Danbury Church holds another intriguing mystery, revealed in 1779, when some workmen digging a grave in the North Isle made an interesting discovery. About three feet down, they came upon a stone slab, and beneath that was a lead coffin. The rector, the church warden, and the village doctor were summoned, and in a state of great excitement, the three arrived, under the impression that as the coffin was buried inside one of the church's ancient wooden effigies, inside would be found the remains of a knight of St. Clair family. Impatient as they were to investigate, the three gentlemen contained themselves while they waited for Dr. Gower, a famous Chelsford articulary, to join them. But when he didn't arrive three days after the discovery of the coffin, they decided to go ahead without him. In 1789, Mr White, the doctor, wrote a full report for the Gentle's magazine so that we have a blow-by-blow account of what happened next. The lid of the lead coffin was prized off with a crowbar to reveal another coffin of elm wood 
in perfect condition. Inside this they found a cement shell, three quarters of an inch thick, and when this in turn was opened, they gazed in astonishment at the incorrupt body of a young man, apparently claimed by death in the prime of his life. His skin was white and firm, although the face and neck were slightly discoloured. Part of one arm was decayed. He had a set of perfect white teeth in his pink gums, and the body appeared to show no sign of disease or injury. In his linen shirt with ruffles at the neck, he lay partly immersed in a honey-coloured liquid, floating with strange herbs and flowers, a few feathers from the pillow beneath his head, which had disintegrated. The body measured five feet long and was hard to the touch, and the three witnesses decided that it had been embalmed before being immersed in the liquid which partially filled the coffin. This lid had a slight, delicate smell, and as Mr. White possessed no sense of smell, nothing daunted, he decided to taste it, describing it as aromatic, though not very pungent, partaking of the taste of the mushroom ketchup and of the pickle of Spanish olives. Not content with this, the three men each ripped off a strip of the corpse's shirt as a memento, and then allowed the curious parishioners in the church to view the body. By now, Dr Gower, the antiquary, had joined them, and they all agreed that this must be the body of the night. Wooden, those wooden effigy that lay close by, one of those. Since that appeared to be the end of the matter, the trio of cement, wood and lead coffin were closed down and sealed and returned to the form position in the north aisle. But when Mr White's account appeared in print, antiquary Joseph Strutt, the local MP for Malden, was not convinced about the pickled knight's identity. It was his opinion that this method of preserving bodies was not in use in England until the 15th century, and the armour of the wooden figure dated it at late 13th or early 14th century. To prove his point, he opened the tomb beneath. Yes, beneath the wooden effigy, of course, and found, as he expected, a skeleton which had been interred in the 13th century fashion without a coffin or shroud. Since there seemed to be no doubt about the identity of these remains, Mr Strutt's detective's instincts now turned to the true identity of the mysterious body in the mushroom ketchup. And it does say mushroom ketchup, not ketchup. He dug down to the pickled knight's grave and found that the outer lid coffin had no inscription of any kind, but the stone slab which covered it had a cross, a fleury, and appeared to have once had a brass plaque. Mr Strutt thought this must probably have been the one mentioned by the historian Weaver, which had read, Hi, Janet Geraldus, quandum filius et heres, Geraldi Brevoque, Melitis Qui, Obit Marchi. He allies Gerald, once the son and heir of Sir Gerald Brayrock, who died 29th of March, 1422. Mr. Strutt would have been interested to know that when St. Paul's was being restored, after it had been damaged in the Great Fire of London in 1666, the coffin of Gerald's uncle Robert, Bishop of London, was opened and the body found in perfect condition, preserved in the same fashion as the body in Danbury Church. Robert had been buried in 1404, 18 years before the death of his nephew, so that this method of preserving the body would have been known to the family. In his absorbing book, The Knights of Danbury, Andrew Collins has researched the history of the St. Clair family and disagreed that the embalmed knight was Gerald de Braybrook. In his opinion, the most likely candidate was William St. Clair, Lord of the Manor of Danbury, and one of the wooden effigies in the north aisle of the church. He was Sheriff of Essex and Hertford in 1279, and died in 1283. 
We do not seem to know the age of William, but the body seen in 1779 was described by an eyewitness as a hearty youth. So perhaps he was rather young to have been the sheriff four years earlier. And what are the bones of Mr. Stroke that found in the logical place beneath the 13th or early 14th century wooden effigy in the North Isle? It seems as if the mystery of the pickled knight of Danbury has still some way to run. The end. What an interesting story. Imagine coming upon a coffin like that and it's literally got a pickled human in it. Wow. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Please hit that like, share if you can and consider subscribing. Many blessings. Wisteria, Wisteria. Energy. 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 Twister. 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 Twister.